I'm Randall Keynes. I'm a great-great-grandson of Charles Darwin, and I'm here at the building from where The Origin of Species was published just 150 years ago to look at the fancy pigeons that Darwin used at a key point in his arguments for his theory of evolution by natural selection with John Ross, who is a pigeon breeder, judge, and exhibitor who has brought together these six species and can explain them to us. Um, John, can you explain these two first, which are really the most different of all the ones? Yes, I can, Randall. The English Pouter was developed by fanciers around about 1730s from Dutch croppers, which were a pouting pigeon. The fanciers preferred the birds with the bigger crops. Yes. And as the crop was developed big chest, yes. and the birds were selected for that crop, they were then highly prized and then the breed was developed in that way. You'll also find the legs are longer and they've got feathered legs. So of course the fanciers preferred the breeds to look in this way. Compared to the almond tumbler, which again was developed around about the 1730s. From this, the same ancestor. From the clumber Libya, the rock dove, the humble rock pigeon, the short-faced almond was bred for its very, very short beak and also the colouring, which is quite a remarkable almond colouring. And this bird was very, very highly prized at the time, times of, of, of Charles Darwin. So Darwin felt that these two birds and the four others that we'll see show how species can be changed by humans breeding them selectively. And if humans can work changes like this on descendants of one bird over just a few generations, it must be possible for nature to develop new species by natural selection. Of course, the breeds we see here today, they have taken many generations to change, but they have changed. And man has selected those changes. And uh, to see there may be as many as 250 different types of Columba mm. Livia yes. is quite extraordinary when they've all been developed by man. Uh, just by noticing an odd colour feather or a short beak or a large crop, that man has selected the points that he wanted to develop. And then bred them. And bred and them. And bred on. them. Yes. 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 So what other ones do we have? Well, the other one is the, the barb. It's quite an interesting bird. And this particular bird, this particular bird has a very well-developed eye sear and an extremely short beak, coupled with a wide forehead. And Darwin was surprised that this bird was related to the carrier albeit they look completely different. But he found that in the embryo development, for the first 24 hours, they were exactly correct. Yes. And it was extraordinary that they, then they diverged after that and the beak developed longer. Again, then, close cousins, the two, yes. the white yes, one and but the diverged one. a long yes. time ago, definitely. The next bird, the Scandaroon, Darwin liked this bird for its extremely long beak. And not only is it extremely long, it's very curved and curved downwards. And you'll also notice that has a very red eye sear. So again, um, Darwin uh, took measurements from these birds and that was the most extreme that he had. The fantail, which is what everybody would recognize, has this amazing amount of feathers. And in fact, it's in two rows arranged in the back. And again, um, this would have started with maybe a couple of extra tail feathers and then it would have developed, you know, people would have liked what they saw and developed them from there. And now this bird may have up to 42 tail feathers. The carrier is the king of pigeons, or was known as that in Darwin's time, and has this very regal, stately look about him. And um, Darwin would have noticed the wattle, which resembled, they say, a large walnut. The wattle uh, being the, the wattle is the bulbous it, it, yeah around the no material, around the nostril yes. yeah. One can see, I think, very clearly here one point that Darwin was particularly interested in, and that was that the changes that humans can work by selection in this way affect not only things like the colour of the feathers, which one might reckon was easily varied, but in the case of the barb and the scandaroon, the whole shape 
of the bones of the skull. Of course. Darwin noticed with the uh, English pouter that the vertebra were more numerous and the ribs were wider. So you found that even the skeleton each inside had changed, not just the external characteristics mm. which we see today. And with the barb, the barb has the most extraordinary width to its head, which uh, no other breed appears to have. Yes, yes. The point for Darwin about these six birds, as he explained in The Origin of Species, was that they have all been developed, as we know, from one kind of pigeon, the wild rock pigeon that is common in Europe. And they've all been developed in these extraordinarily different forms over just a few hundred years. What he suggested in this first chapter of The Origin of Species, in which he used these as the best example of just how humans, by breeding, could shape species, and so couldn't nature do it too. What he felt was that these six birds, if they were seen by an expert ornithologist, who was a taxonomist, who was one an expert in naming different species and arranging them in different genera, the higher categories of kinds of bird. An ornithologist would say, these birds are so different from each other that they must not only be separate species, that bird and that bird, clearly quite different, separate species. He would say also they're so different they, that most of them should be counted as separate genera, that is, kinds of bird rather than particular species. The one with the wide forehead and the short beak, the one with the fantail, the one with the extraordinary wattle on its beak, the wonderful pouter with its great chest that it inflates for display, and then the beautiful little arm tumbler with its minute beak. He felt this was the most extreme example of variety from one common ancestor where the breeders had managed to develop birds that could count as specimens of five different genera. And that was his point about how species can change.